Have you been struggling how to create hard surface models in Maya that rely on radial symmetry? Well, if so, I think this is the video for you. I created a workflow that combines the power of radial symmetry along with instances to allow you to basically model on a small piece of the model and have it radially be applied to the whole piece, giving you instant feedback and showing you the end result as you model. All that plus some bonus tips in the video coming up. What you gonna do with me and all the hard surfers Marvin maniacs run wild on you? <laughs> Apparently when I wear these throwback t-shirts of Hulk Hogan from the 80s, I get superpowers and uh, I start acting like a dumbass. What's going on you 3D modeling beast? This is JL Musi. And today we are talking about hard surface modeling in Maya and creating uh, hard surface models that rely on radial symmetry. How this video came about is I had a couple people ask me how to go about creating car rims and I decided to do the video and I have a pretty nice uh, setup with radial symmetry that uses the power of instances. So we're gonna get into Maya and we're gonna look at how we can set up this uh, symmetry system where we only need a model on a small piece of it, have it radially update throughout the whole model. If you wanna get better and faster at hard surface modeling in Maya, I recommend that you download my hard surface modeling cheat sheets, which is a quick start guide that will jumpstart your hard surface modeling within Maya. The great thing about the guide is that it contains links to bookmark parts within my YouTube videos shall you need more explanation on one of those topics. So without further ado, let's get on with the video. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. And for the purposes of this uh, tutorial, I won't be showing you every menu uh, command or every tool since most of my modeling tools are hotkeyed. So any tool that I don't show you exactly how to get to it, I will go ahead and place a call out card showing you exactly how to access that tool. So let's go ahead and begin. I'll go ahead and create a cylinder here, polygon primitives, and we'll go to the option box. And I'm gonna set the radius to five. The height is fine at two. Uh, axes, divisions, it's gonna be 60. Uh, basically, uh, however number of symmetry lines you have or radial symmetry lines you have, you wanna make sure that uh, this number divides evenly. So in my case, I have a five spoked rim that is five lines of symmetry. Therefore, I'm gonna make sure that these divisions here actually divide evenly within 60. So 60 divided by five is gonna give us 12. So I know that will work, all right? I like to have a two divisions on here and I'll show you exactly why in a second. And I need this guy to be in the Z and that's gonna face the front. So I'll hit create and what I'll do from this point is I only need to uh, scoop up six faces here. So I'll make sure that I'm on my uh, face mode. I'll hold down tab. And before I do that, I'm actually gonna select this loop and just scale it all the way down here, right? And this one that you see is actually just from the back, that's fine. We'll just go to shaded mode, make sure we're on face mode. Hold down tab, scoop up six faces here. And then we also need to scoop these smaller faces. So still holding down tab, I'll paint the uh, rest of the faces there. And then we're gonna do Control Shift I, that's gonna go ahead and flip your selection. And now we basically have the first part of our setup, right? So from here, I'll go back to my front, make sure this is an object mode, Shift, right click, and then we will go to Mirror. And you wanna make sure that this is set to Instance instead of Copy. We're gonna flip this guy in the X, We'll hit mirror and there we go, right? So uh, the result of this is being mirrored over here. And now what we'll do is we'll take both of these. We'll go to uh, edit, duplicate special, option box. And we need four additional copies since we already have one and this is a five spoke rim. This is 72 and I'll show you why it's 72 and the Z 
because we're going to take 360, that's the number of degrees in a circle, and we're going to divide that by however many uh, symmetry lines we have. In this case, it's going to be 5, and we're going to get 72. The axis is the Z because that's where we need to basically revolve this from, right? So we'll go ahead and go to duplicate special. And now you see that our symmetry system is actually set up. So whatever I do on one side, it's going to radially symmetrize all the way through. And this is a great uh, setup for concepting or following a pretty uh, precise blueprint, right? So, and sometimes some of these shapes can be actually hard to see, especially if you're concepting. Uh, but with the symmetry setup, it just works well for working with blueprints or even uh, creating some concepts on the fly. From here, I'm going to select the main piece that I've been working on. And for visibility purposes, I'll right click, assign existing material, and I'll just give this a Lambert with a slightly different tone. That way it's easy to just pick apart from the rest. All right, so from here, I'm going to go ahead and get my multi-cut tool. And I'm going to go ahead and block out the uh, center cap here just by holding down control and adding edge loop. And then I'll add one here to basically block in the uh, outer or the top part of this uh, rim. And then I will also go ahead and start cutting out this five star shape. So I'll cut from here to about here, and then I'll go ahead and cut this way as well. And then from here, I'll hold down control shift. You see that I get nine degree increments or a 90 degree uh, angle and I'm gonna cut this way. So we're gonna go ahead and block out the uh, cylindrical cutout here for the lug nuts. Since we're using a more advanced uh, symmetry setup, we unfortunately probably won't be able to use uh, the shift right click. If I go to shift right click, uh, the circularize components option, and I use that sometimes. For this, we're gonna have to actually use a more old school approach, but it's actually a good thing uh, that you do learn it uh, sometimes there are instances like this one where circularized components uh, will not be ideal. I'll go ahead and just get a, another cylinder and then we'll go ahead and tweak this. So I'll go to the uh, options here. I'm hitting control A uh, to get these options here. And what I want to do is set this to eight and we could actually set the uh, size down quite a bit and we only need one subdivision along the caps and then uh, what I'll do is I'll just hold down V and just vert snap here and then I'll go ahead and just scale down. I'm going to go ahead and just give this guy a little bit more of a shape. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this guy back and if I do uh, edge slide it'll respect that uh, symmetry line. So I'm just playing with the overall verts. I just gave more a little bit of a, a curvature on this, right? So I like how that looks. And I'll take this guy here, maybe just move him this way. I'll go to my face mode, hold down tab, scoop these guys up, hit delete, get my verts here. And I'll start adding some perpendicular cuts here with the multi-cut holding down control shift that snap into nine degree increments. That's going to be indicated by that green uh, box that you see. I'm going to add one here. So this is, this looks pretty good. I can take these edges and just scale them if I want them flat. And usually I do unless there's a specific reason. And then from here, we could start cleaning some of this up. So we'll take these guys here, delete, delete, and we're just reducing some of that uh, extra geometry, right? So from here, I wanna go ahead and make sure that this is snapped, and this is gonna be actually important uh, to this surface here. So what we can do is go to our move tool, hit D again, V to vert snap there at the pole, W again, and then V, now that that um, 
pivot is right at the um, pole right there of this cylinder, we can do a, another vert snap and we're flush right there with the surface. So we'll go back to the uh, front view here. And now we can go ahead with the multi-cut is start tracing. And then with the multi-cut, we can go ahead and kind of trace this outline. Really doesn't matter if it's exact. We just want to get some geometry here. And then we'll go ahead and look for verts to actually snap onto it. So this looks good. And then I'll just go to my faces here and delete this. And you see that this is going to match up. So from this point, from here, I'll take my verts, move them, and I'll turn off, make sure that this is off. So I'll take my verts and just start vert snapping. And this guy, I will take this way with the multi-cut. All right, so I'm just going to delete this edge here. And we're relatively clean here. Let's work on this part. So usually what I like to do is have a nice edge pretty much around the borders. And that's going to hold our shape a lot better. It's also going to give us more options for edge flow. So I'll go ahead and get my insert edge loop tool and we'll go ahead and drop that there and we'll delete this in a second. Uh, and I'll do the same thing here and maybe just put a, put it a little bit closer. Then I'll go back to the multi-cut and then cut here and I'll cut here and I'll cut here. And then from this point, we could just delete this range here. Make sure you're doing a control and delete to delete the verts as well. And then what we can do is take this guy, hold down V, that's gonna kill that little try. And then we can go ahead and just kind of move this guy back. So I'm gonna add a uh, cut here. And then from here, I'll do something like this. So we're gonna have to reduce some of this geometry here because we probably don't want it going all the way up here. So what I'll do is with the multi-cut is I'll add a one edge loop right in the middle and I'll connect this guy here. I think this one is the one we could actually connect. So we'll do that, merge it. And then we can just move this guy over like this. And then this guy, we can probably just route this way, all right? So if we take this and delete it and actually just merge uh, or get rid of this guy, so we can go this way. So now that's quadded, right? And now we have to just fix this uh, right here. So what we'll do is we'll just route it this way and we'll use the extra geometry to actually give us some curvature here. And that's that's something that I talk about quite a bit is routing um, you know, extra topology uh, towards the corners. And that way uh, you could keep things all quadded and still round shapes out. So I'll go here, here and cut this way. So now we have quads there and then we can do the same thing there we have quads there and if you want to you can shape these just a little bit it's not going to make a huge deal anyways uh, since this is on a flat surface the cool thing is now we could actually give this a little bit more of a rounded look or corner just with that added topology now we'll space these out because I don't want to cause any a weird pinching. So I am mindful of spacing. So I'll go ahead and take my multi-cut tool and trace here like this. I'll 
I'll hit enter. And then from this point, this is gonna act as a buffer, right? I like to have kind of that extra loop here. So I can, what I can do with these guys is take them, vert snap them, and merge. And I'm still quadded, but I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of that pinching that we have, right? So we can take these guys here, merge it. We're gonna still be quadded. And now that perimeter is gonna be nice and clean. And sometimes it's easier just to delete without having that many spans. And since I still want a relative straight line, I'm just gonna get rid of those edges there and just pull in. So now that I got the shape, I can go ahead and just add another division right there in the, with the multi-cut. And with the multi-cut, if you uh, middle mouse click and you hold down control middle mouse, you, you'll drop the edge loop right between uh, two um, parallel loops. So what I did here is just added and deleted some uh, edges and just really got the clean profile for this hole that I wanted. So really, uh, we're almost done. The last thing that I want to do is uh, fix some of this here. Um, obviously, we added topology here, and right here is going to leave a flat spot. So I'll go ahead and break this into edge mode. Hit D, and then we'll go ahead and orient this. Holding down control will orient to, the, to this edge, the move tool, and then I'll go ahead and break up that flatness just slightly, right? So we continue that curvature. And then for here, we're gonna have to reroute this. So I'll go ahead and take my insert edge loop tool, insert the edge loop, and then with the multi-cut is I'll just route this guy here towards the opening. And then what I can do is just get rid of this guy. So from here, I can just take this, hold down V, vert snap, merge, take this edge and delete it. And believe it or not, we're nice and quadded here. And we could actually just pull this guy down a little bit. All right. So this, this looks pretty good. And we're going to get a nice rounded corner there. And my materials got um, off a little bit here. So... I'll go ahead and assign that uh, Lambert one to these. And now I'll just go ahead and take these guys, probably this guy, and just push it back a little bit. <coughs> and most of these rims are not usually up and down. They, they have a little bit of curvature, especially if they're um, performance rims. So I'm just rounding out this uh, spoke right here by grabbing the verts and just pushing. Just gonna add an extra loop there wherever I need it. All right, so I just basically pushed and pulled edges till I got a little bit of a curvature and I got what I wanted. So now let's go ahead and start adding some thickness to this. I'll select this one edge here, hold on shift and select that range. And then I'll just extrude backwards. So what I did is I just did a quick extrude and then as soon as I did the extrude, I just um, activated my move tool and I'll go ahead and push back like so. So I wanna go ahead and taper this quite a bit. So what I'm gonna do is I'll hit D, V, vert snap here where I wanna taper from, activate my rotate tool and I'll just rotate backwards, right? And now we see that we have a nice uh, tapered look and it was pretty easy to do. Just uh, basically uh, switching around that uh, pivot point so just looking at this thickness, I wanna add a little bit more shape to this. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and select this range here. And then if we double click our move tool, we have uh, our options for the uh, move settings. And we could just enable soft select. And the main thing is I wanna move this as a unit. So I want this to be fully uh, yellow. And what I can do is just bring down this feathering just a little bit or the fall off radius. 
I'm just going to push this back just a little bit and we'll go ahead. And so I did a quick extrude and just grab my move tool and then we're going to leave that there. And now let's go ahead and build the lip that's going to go on top of this right here. So we're going to go ahead and just select this range. We'll extrude and then we'll extrude outward and however um, deep you want that lip to be. I think I'm happy with this right here. And then from here, we can just basically extrude outward and play with the uh, thickness. So from this point, let's go ahead and just match these uh, verts here. So we'll go into the side view here. I'm sorry, the front. Take this vert, move, hit D to uh, edit the pivot. We'll go ahead and hold down control to orient along that edge. And we'll just push that way. So we'll respect that line and then we'll do the same thing here. So D, hold down control W and now we're moving along that edge. Now it's time to give this guy some thickness this way. So we'll do another extrude and we'll push this way. So we're gonna push this right about what should be halfway and I think that looks pretty good. From this point, we can add uh, some geometry here to basically just fill this uh, back piece out. So we'll go ahead and get another cylinder. We'll go ahead and just jump here to the front, grab another cylinder, and uh, this time, what we can do is just push this guy back right about here. So this looks pretty good. Um, we'll go ahead and just select our faces. Here, just delete. And we just kind of want this uh, shell right here. And with this shell, we'll select it. And then we'll go to mesh display. And then we'll go to reverse. And we're going to flip those normals. And now we just have some geometry there to fill this in. So we'll add an edge loop there. And then this needs to be pushed down. So a couple ways I can go about it. I could just extrude down or I can just add another one and then scale down. But I think I'll try the extrude method. So I'll select these guys here. I'll go to the extrude tool. And then we'll go ahead and play with the thickness. So we'll put that first lip right about here. And we're actually gonna go ahead and repeat this process. So I'll add another cut right about here. And then I'll take these guys here and extrude downward as well. So this looks pretty good. And then from here, we can go ahead and take this guy and bevel it like this. And then we'll take this guy, we'll bevel it. And this was gonna be a little bit less extreme, the bevel. And I think I like it. So now it's time just to add some holding edges. And I'll add one here. Basically anywhere that needs to be a hard edge I'm just adding a holding edge. Uh, these guys right here, I won't, that because I want it to be more of a round shape. You can also bevel, so sometimes I'll just take this and then apply a bevel with uh, two divisions on there, and that's gonna allow you to add a holding edge. And now what I can do is take this guy and isolate it, and we have to get rid of a couple of things, mainly all this stuff right here. So we'll scoop these guys up like so. And then we'll scoop these up as well. Select this range, select this range, hit delete. I'll take these guys here. Basically any edge that needs to be reinforced, just apply a small bevel, multi-cut, drop a loop right there. That looks good. I'll add one here as well. That looks good. 
I'll take this and block out that center cap and just add a small panel line there. So I'll go ahead and bevel this and then just select these faces, extrude, and I'll go ahead and push. And what I'll also do is give it three divisions and those three divisions are gonna hold, um, basically create a nice uh, hard edge right there. Make sure we scoop these and these right here as well. Hit delete. And now what I'll do is I wanna go ahead and just match uh, this edge here. So I'll take it and then I can just move it. Could always go into wireframe. So that looks pretty good. All right, from this point, I'll go ahead and test uh, my mesh here and I'll sub uh, go into sub D's, make sure everything's looking good. And as I usually do, I like to go ahead and assign a blend anytime that I'm testing how um, you know the model's holding up, especially with sub D modeling. I like to just plop a blend in there. And the reason I like the blend, I'm gonna take wireframe on shade it off, but it'll expose any pinching that you have um, because of the specular highlight. So it's gonna be a little bit more evident. So this actually looks pretty good. Uh, things like this I'm not worried about because once we symmetrize and these uh, verts are merged, uh, they will actually uh, go into sub D looking properly. So I'm gonna add an extra loop here uh, with the multi-cut. And that's because uh, sometimes when you have these large spans, I like to contain uh, geometry a little bit uh, closer especially since we have all this right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and just drop one right there. And now you see that it's just contained a little bit better. But overall, this looks pretty good. So uh, I'm ready for the next step, which is actually getting rid of uh, everything but this. And we'll do some final modeling, and then we'll go ahead and bring every single piece back and get our whole finished rim. So I'll just take all these right here. Delete it. And one thing that we need to go ahead and do is actually just uh, delete this as well. But what we need to do is actually just snag this piece here and mirror it. So we're gonna go ahead and mirror a partial piece. So for me to do that, the first thing that I wanna do is basically duplicate this and then I'll go ahead and isolate the uh, duplicate. And what I can do is select this edge here, this edge here, and then we can go ahead and detach components. And what detaching does is separate components so they're no longer attached. And yes, I could have basically gone and selected faces, but I like detaching because you could uh, use edge loops to your advantage, detach, and now you can double click and you could delete this island, right? So the next thing that I probably wanna do is pull a edge from here. I'll go ahead and select this edge here and I'll go to my front view and I could just isolate this. So I'll take these edges, extrude, and I'll just go ahead and extrude down. Go ahead and take this vert here, and then just vert snap. So I'll go ahead and take this edge here, hit D, V, vert snap here, W to access the move tool, and then I'll just vert snap that edge like this. And then all I have to do from here is just take this, and then we can extrude this way. If I wanna be really precise, what I can do is hit D, V, vert snap here, and then move to again, and then vert snap there. And we know that this is nice and flush. And I'll just go ahead and drop this edge here, drop this edge right about here. And now what I can do is, should be able to merge these guys. And anytime that I merge verts, I like to just 
take a quick look at uh, verts that are close together and make sure that I'm not getting any uh, over pinching like this. So this looks good and this is smoothing out fine. So from this point, what I'll do is just flip this guy over. So I'll bring my other piece back and I'm doing um, to isolate selected, you can do shift I and then with nothing selected, you can do shift I again and you can bring uh, pretty much your geometry back. So what I'll do is I'll take this piece here, I'll hit D and then hold down V, just vert snap here. And then what I can do is just scale in the negative Z. So if I give this guy a negative one, it'll flip this guy over like this and we should be ready to merge it. So I'll select that and we'll go ahead and merge it. So first I'll combine the geometry. So I'm gonna take these verts, merge them, and this should look good. And the last order of business for this piece is to actually mirror it once. So we'll actually get our one fifth. So with this, even though the pivot is off, since we're working off the world, we shouldn't need to adjust the pivot. So we're on world X and mirror. And what we actually need to do is change this. So we're actually on copy and that's gonna allow us to merge these uh, vertices. Uh, so this looks fine, mirror. I have this super high uh, merge threshold. So I like to just set this to zero and then just give it a super low value. And then I'll go to three mode and everything looks fine. Just making sure that all these uh, close verts are not pinched. And here we have some verts that didn't get merged. So as soon as they get merged, they behave properly. Now, since we have this, I, what I prefer doing is once I have these radial caps that need to be closed, I'd rather have a whole piece. So I'm gonna take this, and just push it back slightly. I'll extrude and I'll go ahead and just give it some thickness here like this. And then I'll go ahead and push back again. And all this is a lot easier um, when you have a whole piece and you're just basically in the middle of these extrusions. And then from here, what we could do is extrude it one more time. And we don't even have to do an offset or play with the thickness at all. All we have to do is since we have those edges on top of each other, we can do a shift right click, merge collapse, merge to center, and that's gonna cap that out for us. And that's gonna cap that uh, off for us. So from here, we can just double click these guys that need to be reinforced. We'll apply a bevel with two divisions or one edge on each side. This should smooth out pretty well. So yeah, we're pretty much almost done with this. So the last order of business is to do a duplicate special. We do need to move the pivot to um, this right here, where it's gonna basically duplicate from. So I'll hit D, hold down V, click this vert, go back to the move tool, and then now we'll go to edit, duplicate special, option box, same settings as before. The only difference is we'll click copy here, duplicate special, and there it is. So we'll take um, all these five pieces here. The last order of business before we uh, basically uh, finish this out is to create that uh, lug right here. So what I'll do is I'll create another cylinder, go to the inputs, put six, bring this to one, just scale this down and give it some thickness. And then from here, I'll hit D, V, and just vert snap here. And then I'll vert snap one more time. Scale. What I'll do here is just select all the edges and then I'll go ahead and basically deselect these ones in the middle, right? On this face. 
And now we can just do a bevel. Something like this. And uh, this kind of brings a point where not everything, and obviously I could drop holding edges here, but this is a pretty straight shape. So this might be a little bit OD, and I could if I really wanted to, but I think a bevel is going to serve its purpose here because we just really want rounding here at the corner. So uh, I think the bevel will work fine for that. So I'm going to take the rim and the lug, combine it. I'll go to D to edit the pivot, V to vert snap here, W to access the move tool. And then I'll go to edit, duplicate special options. The math is already set. The only thing that we have to change is make sure that we're on copy. So it's still gonna be 72 in the Z. Number of copies is gonna be four. We'll duplicate special. And now we'll go ahead and select this one right here. We'll combine. We'll take all the verts. We'll do a merge. Make sure that all these uh, verts are actually merged. And you see that the problem with that was that it killed our bevel on the lug, but this is gonna be an easy fix. What I'll just do is deselect the verts here. And now I'll run the merge again with a very, very low uh, merge tolerance. And if you can't get the 0.001 to pop up, you can do control and shift and you'll shift to these lower tolerances. So this should look good, no pinching. And the last order of business is just to basically fix the width on this. So I'll take this and just kind of move it over. And what I can do for the back of the rim here, since we kind of see this gap, I'll just take this edge here I'll just extrude out like this. So with the multi-cut, I'll just add another holding edge there. And ladies and gentlemen, this is the finished rim right here. Thank you so much for tuning in, folks, and spending some time with me learning how to create radial hard surface models within Maya. As always, I appreciate your time, your feedback. Please let me know how I did in the comment section down below. Don't forget to like the video, and please share this with any 3D artist that you think might find value in the information. Until we meet again, folks, I will catch you next time.